Hey YouTube, my name is Chase. I'm an incoming medical student this fall of 2023, and I am here to talk to you guys about why I retook my 509 MCAT. Um, I basically retook a 509. I ended up getting a 514 on my retake, and I would probably say I stand by that decision. Um, it did, I believe, help me get my MD acceptance this year, which I will talk about in another video. But overall, I do think it was worth retaking. And then I've got a couple notes about if you're in a similar position to me, what I think the factors that make the biggest like decision on if you're going to go jump and decide to go for that retake. The first one being score and your demographic. Um, so you can look on SDN and there's a lot of um, like ADCOM members that'll help you if you do a what are my chances. And some will tell you if your MCAT is too low or whatnot, and then you need to look at the MCAT for your target schools, like where your score sits, and then where your score sits in your demographic for accepted students. So for me, the 509, anywhere honestly under a 511 was the cutoff I'd set in my head. If I don't score that, I'm going to retake the test. Um, that set of 509 is probably fine. Um, if the rest of your application is absolutely stellar, mine was okay, but I wouldn't say it was like anything absolutely out of this world. So I felt like retaking it would be beneficial to my application. So if your score was lower than you wanted and lower than your practice tests, that's the other key. So my score was four points lower than my practice test, which was a 513 the first time I tried to study. That was my AMC four test average. Um, some things happened during the test. I got a flat tire on the way there. It was just a nightmare stress-wise, and I did not score optimally at all. Um, so that said, if your score is below what your accepted like demographic is to whatever schools you want to go to, and it was a bad test day for you, I think you might consider retaking. The only thing of note there on the score is you cannot retake the test if you think there's a possibility that you do worse or that you don't get out of your confidence band. If you look at my application video, there's the AAMC like whole PDF app there. And it says my confidence band on my first test was a 507 to a 511, right? So if I didn't score higher than a 511 on my retake, realistically, it's not significant at all. And some schools may average your two scores. So if you don't go up high enough, it really doesn't do you a benefit. I think a five point jump is like the minimum that I would take. So I got a 514 and my confidence band was then a 512 to a 516. So I completely jumped to a new confidence band, which is better. However, that score also dropped from my practice test. So I was testing at around a 518 on new full lengths and then also a 518 on my AAMC retakes, which I believe were inflated. Um, and I ended up scoring a 514, which was high enough but I knew like worst case scenario, I get a 514 on the retake. Like that was the low end of what I thought I was gonna get, which I ended up getting. So I'm glad that was like the low end I'd set. If you're anywhere close to your old score, I probably would not retake and I would try and like bring up a deficit somewhere else in your application that might make a big difference. One of the other main considerations when retaking the MCAT is gonna be your cost associated with it. Um, so you've got a lot of costs associated. The test itself, if you're gonna buy another question bank, um, if you're gonna take an MCAT class, which I actually did for my second um, time around, I self-studied the first one and then I took a class the second, which I believe helped me balance taking, um, retaking the MCAT while taking a full course load and working. Like the class provided a lot of structure that I'll go over in another video on if you should take an MCAT class. Um, but I really liked it, however, it was multiple thousand dollars in order to take that course. So that should definitely be factored in. And then also the opportunity cost of not improving somewhere else in your application, right? Let's say you study 35 hours a week for the MCAT. Could those 35 hours have been put elsewhere in your application that might've made a bigger difference? That's the only place where I think I might've gone wrong with my strategy was I did not really up my non-clinical volunteer hours. And instead, I decided to take an MCAT class with already a full schedule. And those hours may have been spent better elsewhere. Um, so mainly, you've got your scores, the total cost of the test, and then schedule. Now, a little caveat on your scores. I think it does depend on the sections that you're low in. If your CARS is low, but let's say English is not your first language, you might get a little break there. 
But if your biochem bio is low, that might be a red flag to um, adcoms that like you didn't do great in your like prereqs or you didn't really understand it. And that's something you're going to be taking again in med school. So for me, my first test breakdown, it was a 128 CP, 127 cars, 126 biochem bio and a 128 psych -soc. That 126 was a 60th percentile biochem bio, which was not acceptable for me to put that on my application. Had it been like a 126 cars and a 127 biochem bio, I might have been okay with going ahead with the 509 and trying to make my application better elsewhere. When I retook, I got a 129, 127, 127, 131. Um, that was a better score for me. Um, the cars dropped three points from my testing average, which was slightly disappointing. Um, but overall, it was a more balanced score. I would have liked it to be more at my practice test, but a 514 I felt like was plenty without a low section, everything being above a 127, that I was able to proceed with that score um, and go ahead with the application cycle. So I would say if you're in the boat of, should I retake, should I not retake? If you think it was a bad test day, you're fully confident that you can get a better score. You have the discipline to restudy for the MCAT because I will tell you studying the second time, getting motivation to study is so much harder, especially if the first time wasn't really fun and games for you. And it was like, why am I spending all of my time studying for a test instead of doing other things for my application? The second time is 100 times worse, so much worse. But if you have the discipline to do that, you're confident your score can go up. And I think it's almost like a, it's like a mental switch for me. When I got the 509, I was disappointed in myself. I was upset. And then it was like, okay, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my application better so that I am competitive for medical school. I think if you're in that boat and you know that this is exactly what you want to do and you can power through it, I think retaking the MCAT is totally fine. I disagreed with several people that told me that a 509 was okay and you should just apply broadly and whatnot. Um, a little sneak peek for my acceptance videos. I applied to 31 MD schools and I got, and I applied early and I submitted my secondaries early. I got one interview invite and one acceptance. Um, and that was with the 514. If I had the 509, like several of my friends do that are like similar demographics, pretty similar scores. As of today is March 23rd, the vast majority of them are on wait lists still just one or two wait lists. They're holding acceptances to DO schools. So if you're okay with doing that, you're totally probably good to go with a 509 or a 510. But if you are trying to get into an MD school in a similar demographic to me, I think adding that extra bonus to your application score is worth it. I, I truly do. I think applying with a subpar MCAT score without a stellar application, like let's say, you played a professional sport or you were a D1 college athlete, something like that, and then your score was lower, that's okay. But if you're pretty much a standard pre-med who did everything right, but you're not standing out in like some exceptional way and you have a below average MCAT for matriculation, I would consider retaking the test score, truthfully. I know it sucks and it's probably not the information that you wanna hear after getting your first score back and it wasn't great, but I truly think it did help. And I would probably recommend that if you are in below an 80th percentile MCAT score, I would consider retaking if you're confident that you can do better. Anyways, if you have any other questions about my application overall, um, what I did, if you want me to go into more detail on the MCAT class and if I thought it was worth the investment or anything related, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me a message. I'm more than happy to answer and help. It's all still pretty fresh in my mind since I just applied this past cycle. Um, and with the one gearing up, I'd love to help you guys get in. Thanks.